hey, uh, after our last event, we got an email asking a pretty common question. So I figure I'd make a video about it instead of just replying to the email. Uh, the question says, uh, I want to work in, work remotely as a cyber threat analyst. I have an intelligence writing background and currently work on cyber threat issues from a financial perspective, but don't ha yet have specific technical experience or certifications. What would be your advice to getting a foot in the door in the cybersecurity private sector? For example, what certifications or trainings are needed uh, and how do you frame your current experience as something applicable to a company like ours uh, or another cybersecurity provider? Uh, we get asked this a lot and it's a great question. Lots of people want to get into the cybersecurity field. I want lots of people in the cybersecurity field, so I'm always happy to answer it. Uh, so let's take a stab at this one. Um, let's start with certifications. If you're just getting into the field, um, Depending on who you ask, you're going to get a lot of different answers. If you go to Reddit and you say, hey, I want to be in cybersecurity, and you go to the career advice subreddit, uh, you're going to get just bombarded with people telling you to give up and that cybersecurity isn't an entry-level role and you should just not try. Eh, I don't really agree with that. So um, my take on that is basically as a hiring manager for someone who runs a security team, I'm looking for diversity in candidates. I don't want all of my candidates coming from the same background. So the general path of go take your A+, plus, go take your network plus, go take your security plus, and then get a help desk job and do this. Like that's a path, but that's not the path I took. It's not the path that most people I know took, uh, but it's a path. So if you want to take that path, have at it. Uh, I'll hire people from that path, but I'm also going to hire people from the, I went to a cybersecurity bootcamp and I learned a bunch of stuff and I tried to apply it. And I think I did it okay, but I want to work with companies so I can actually learn if I'm right or wrong. I like that path. I like people who try. I like people who home lab. I like people who tinker. Uh, I'll also hire people from the, I went to a four-year university and I got a degree in cybersecurity. Here's the stuff I learned. And here's how I want to apply that. I like that path too. It brings value, right? So how you get there um, can vary. Um, what I will say is there are some core skills that you're going to need, especially if you're looking at things like uh, entering at a SOC position. You need some analysis background and the idea of understanding what analysis is. Um, a great way to do that, from my perspective, is uh, anti-siphon trainings, pay-what-you-can courses. Uh, I think if you take the SOC core skills, uh, the active defense and cyber deception course, and the getting started in security with BHIS and MITRE ATT&CK uh, courses, there's three of the six pay what you can courses. I think you'll be off to the races from an analysis perspective. Um, if you're looking more for the engineering side of things where you want to write like SIM detections and stuff like that, uh, they also have a regular expressions course, which is fantastic. Um, and they also have a packet decoding one from, with uh, Chris Brenton, I think. That's also really good. And that'll get you into kind of the weeds of understanding how packet captures work and stuff like that. So... Um, from a best bang for your buck uh, option, absolutely, you should do that. Um, I think everybody should take those courses. They're fantastic. Uh, we send people to them and we pay so they because we like it. We want to make sure they keep offering these courses for free to some people. Uh, we're a company, so we can pay. We can afford to pay for them, so we do. Uh, but start there. Um, if you have a little money to spend on certifications, I would then take that and go with like a security blue team. Uh, BTL one course, I thought that was really good hands on lab, uh, lab based kind of uh, coursework, and then a hands on exam. Uh, I think that's a good place to spend your money. It's a few hundred dollars, I think for the BTL one level. Um, if you don't have foundational knowledge of IT, and you want to go like the A plus network plus route, uh, Professor Messer is fantastic on YouTube. Uh, I send a lot of people that way to go that route. It's free training. It's really, really good content. Um, even if you don't take the exams, like I don't know that I would spend as much money as they want on an A plus now. Uh, but if you want the knowledge, that's a good way to do it. And then if you have some kind of cursory knowledge already, but you want to kind of tighten up around specific frameworks like MITRE, maybe uh, Cyberary has a ton of great resources around the cyber, uh, the um, MITRE attack defender framework, which I'm a big fan of. So that'll teach you how to use MITRE attacks framework. It'll teach you how to use the MITRE attack navigator. It'll teach you how to do some how their methodology for purple teaming for cyber threat intelligence is for blue teaming, stuff like that. So there's a ton of really good free resources out there. And there's a couple of really decent uh, low level certifications. Um, so that's where I'd start. Um, then from there, you can kind of build. Uh, unless you have a big company backing you, I, I'm not going to say go take a SANS class, right? Like if you're at an entry level, uh, I'd be hard pressed to justify spending that much money for a 300 level class with SANS. Um, 
not that the course isn't good. It's it's probably a fantastic course. In fact, I know some of the instructors; they're really really good. Uh, I just I couldn't I couldn't justify it out of my budget, so I don't expect you to justify it out of yours. Uh, but if your company is willing to pay for it, go for that one. That one's awesome too. Um, as far as adapting your current experience to um, the role that you want. Um, any type of intelligence work is good because you're dealing with analysis and that ultimately is what a SOC does, right? We take cyber threats, malware, hackers, bad guys, doing scans on our network, doing whatever we want, uh, phishing things. And we say, hey, these are bad because X and here's the risk to your business. If you understand how to communicate risk to a business, uh, you're in good shape. That's one of the harder skills to teach. The technical stuff is easier to teach than analysis is. So if you come from an, an analysis background, Great. Have that conversation. Talk about that. Um, the other thing you can bolster to kind of set yourself apart is your communication ability. Writing good intelligence reports and writing good um, any type of security reports is actually very, very, very awesome to have from a skill set perspective. We send all of our SOC to writing classes to fix this up. Um, so play on that. Um, just make sure that you have some background from a business network's fundamentals perspective, right? Like understand that security is there to monitor an infrastructure. If you don't really know what the infrastructure is, you're going to have a hard time understanding and hypothesizing about what's going on. Or, or when you see stuff, you're going to have a very hard time understanding what normal kind of looks like, right? Um, I came from a sysadmin background. So when I see stuff happening on a network, I'm like, yeah, it could be a backup. It could be this. This is what a hypervisor does. This is what a server does. A workstation does. Like, I kind of get what normal is supposed to look like in a Microsoft domain environment. Um, if you've come in and you've never managed a Microsoft domain environment or really even spent a lot of time in one from an administrative perspective, that's a lot harder. So you might need to play a little catch up on the Windows side of things. Um, but other than that, I, I think that people just need to come in and play to their strengths um, and realize that most good hiring managers are looking for that diverse background and the diverse skill set. So don't try to pretend you are what you're not. Like, don't come in and pr try to say, hey, you know, I have this really strong Windows background if you don't have a really strong Windows background because it'll just make you look kind of silly. Um, but do understand that, you know, we're willing to teach people. So put yourself out there. Um, if you see a role that looks interesting, apply for it. Uh, don't be afraid to go through an interview. Definitely don't disqualify yourself because you feel like you're not good enough for it. Let the hiring manager disqualify you if they feel like you're not good enough for it. Uh, hopefully they give you a shot at an interview and at least can give you some feedback if you want. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I'd go about it. I'd apply for cool jobs. I would take the, uh, anti-siphon pay what you can trainings. Uh, if you have a little more to spend, go for one of the certifications like security blue team, uh, BTL one, um, you know, you can go for like a CYSA or something like that, uh, over at CompTIA as well. But I like hands-on, uh, lab-based, uh, trainings and certifications. So, uh, that's why I keep promoting things like anti-siphon. Uh, they don't pay me uh, or give me free things to tell you to go see them. I just like them a lot. So I will always promote the stuff I like. Um, yeah, I think that's it. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you have cool tips on uh, great resources for people trying to get into cybersecurity, definitely leave them there. Happy to share resources about. Have a great night, everybody.